So let me just start off with introducing myself uh, to the attendees. My name is Sabrish Naya. I'm the director of operations for Birth Venue. Uh, we're a blockchain solution startup. We primarily build blockchain solutions. And uh, apart from platform work, we have an upskilling division as well, where we provide blockchain and artificial intelligence training, uh, you know, to uh, across multiple formats to universities, startups, you know, uh, it can vary depending on that. So uh, today's event uh, is going to be, uh, you know, on the topic, uh, can blockchain be the oracle for the uncertain future of the world? Uh, and uh, we are hosting this webinar, you know, in collaboration with uh, Blockchain India, who's been our partners for quite some time. Uh, yeah, and, um, you know, I'm just going to let everybody introduce themselves, starting with Manav, uh, followed by Mr. Bhaskar, then Mr. Satish, and then Mr. Darshan in that order. Uh, so there's no confusion. So, yeah, so Manav, you can start introducing the introduction. Thank you, uh, Sabrish. Hey, guys, uh, I'm Manav, one of the co-founders for Blockchain India. Uh, it's been a pleasure to host this event with both Venue. Uh, they are doing some great work. Uh, to talk about Blockchain India, we started off this community four years back uh, as a knowledge sharing platform. Uh, we are one of the largest blockchain communities in the country and we recently crossed our members 25,000 plus Pan India. Uh, we physically are present in four cities, that's Delhi, Mumbai, Bangalore and Hyderabad. We conduct a lot of knowledge sharing events uh, and our aim for starting this community was that, you know, back in 90s, India lost the opportunity to be a part of the internet boom. And this blockchain boom is something that we should as a country not lose. And uh, the the youngsters, the developers, the entrepreneurs get the opportunity to, uh, you know, be at the same stage as the West and everyone else. And this particular uh, technology gives us that, uh, you know, chance to actually compete with everyone. So this is what our aim was. Uh, fast forwarding it four years, uh, we have worked with Consensus, Stellar, R3 Corda, Tezos, Algorand, Cosmos, Open Application Network. Uh, most of these companies have started their India side activities is after working with us. Uh, we have uh, recently now we've started moving towards, you know, doing more things for uh, Web 3.0 adoption. So we started with 100 days of code where we are looking at, you know, upskilling developers, providing them with the right knowledge and the skill set so that, you know, they learn how to develop on blockchain and helping them, you know, go ahead. Uh, get placed or, you know, looking at uh, grants if they want to start up with their projects or, you know, working that that side. Uh, last year, we did a roadshow where we got along with the entire community. Uh, we, we discussed how, what crypto regulation should be there. Uh, the ideas and the views that the community shared, we compiled it in a report and we submitted it to the government. So, you know, help them analyze what the developers are looking at, what entrepreneurs are looking at, what lawyers, marketers, different people in this ecosystem are looking at to go ahead and, you know, see how they look at crypto or uh, this space ecosystem and how we can regulate it and make it better. Uh, Blockchain India is more or less only here to, you know, for you guys to learn uh, for adoption. So you have any issues, anything that you want to discuss, want to learn, uh, please feel uh, free to reach out to us. You can search us on Facebook, Telegram, Twitter. We are by the name of Blockchain India blockchain with an ed uh, join us for our discussions and you know take part uh, in the activities that we keep posting for people thank you hi uh, i'm bhaskar i'm a co-founder and ceo of business software india we are a startup we're doing working on emerging technologies but our primary focus is on blockchain so we are working on blockchain for six years and we have developed uh, fintech products like uh, stock exchanges, crypto exchanges, currency exchanges, and uh, crypto escrow platform. As well as we are uh, developing other uh, software, blockchain-based software, and we are uh, uh, spreading ourselves beyond the uh, fintech zone because uh, we believe that the real implementation of blockchain is uh, not within the fintech, but it's everywhere. And if the blockchain can be used as a component, as a uh, you know, uh, big ecosystem of different technologies, then blockchain is, can be put everywhere in each and every sector you can imagine of. So uh, uh, this is it. Thank you. Yeah, hi. Good evening, everyone. My name is Satish and uh, I run a company called Intellitic Solutions and uh, we've been in the blockchain space for the last uh, four and a half, uh, five years now. So in Teletext, we have two different business verticals. 
one focusing on hr uh, tech solutions where we offer micro le- micro learning uh, platforms we offer gamified assessments so trying to look at innovative technologies on the hr side the other vertical focuses on blockchain in blockchain uh, we we actually uh, we, st- we do a lot of blockchain programs education programs so i teach blockchain at amity online we run our own certificate programs for specifically for blockchain and agriculture in the agri university so there are a few such programs that we offer and from a development perspective uh, we are actually currently working on a couple of uh, products uh, with blockchain as the base uh, one in the hr space uh, for background verification and uh, looking at how you know remote working can you know how blockchain can impact that second is uh, the one that uh, you know we are really excited about is a product in the agri tech space where we are looking at the entire uh, farm to fork uh, traceability including an ecom integration so that's another uh, solution that we are currently working on so it's been four years in the blockchain space we uh, with you know most of the panelists have seen we've also seen a lot of ups and downs but i think it's a good time for us to be in this space uh, and it's interesting that uh, you know this this pandemic is probably going to increase the focus on emerging technologies and uh, this is a good time for us to talk about what are the potential opportunities and what are the different solutions that can actually emerge thank you great hi everybody i'm darsha i'm one of the co-founders of the bank of orders we started off in 2018 and uh, what we started doing then was we built a platform where users could borrow and lend with cryptocurrencies as a separate asset class so instead of you leaving your capital on an exchange or a cold wallet that doesn't happen to pay you interest we replicated the experience of a savings bank account where you could move your funds into your boh wallet and it could pay you interest and on the other side if you have uh, exposure to this asset class and you need liquidity instead of you selling your asset incurring a capital gains tax we would offer a line of credit against the asset class and uh, uh, from there we've transitioned post the uh, uh, supreme court ban Uh, of uh, we are being lifted we've uh, enabled um, users from india to buy and sell cryptocurrencies as well straight from a platform um, and from a broad perspective um, we think crypto does a phenomenal job in genuinely putting up a fight against the traditional banking ecosystem as we know it um, it's a total um, redesign from the ground up and um, that's what we're trying to achieve as well we 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 see retail banking encompassing storage payments and credit for most people so in a traditional bank storage is done through your bank account uh, payments is done through your upi or your cards or your internet banking and credit is done through your savings account interest rate and uh, the ability for you to get a loan from the bank in the crypto world storage and payments was solved on the protocol layer through your wallets and your peer to peer payment networks and that's why we ended up building a system of credit but uh, the the fact that cryptocurrencies is a closed network payment loop which is both you and i need to be on the network to transact on it is can be uh, a limiting barrier to it being mainstream and what we are building is to break that barrier and bank with crypto um, over the long term so that would en- entail issuing a bank account giving you a card as well um, so that you can choose to deduct your crypto balance or your fiat balance everywhere you transact and also the ability for you to scan a upi code a qr code or a paytm qr code and facilitate a, a a bitcoin or a ethereum transaction from that that's a, a short description of what we're doing all right uh, you know thanks everyone for the introduction there's some really exciting work that's going on over here so you know let's not uh, yeah let's just jump straight into the questions yeah uh, so this is a general question right so uh, i'll just ask the question and then you know we can uh, Uh, I'll start with uh, Mr. Bhaskar, and then uh, you guys can just add on, you know, to the topic. So then we get to the more specialized questions uh, after these general questions. Yeah. Uh, so so yeah. So we uh, both when you as you know a solution startup ourselves, uh, platform development startup. Uh, we we have been building solutions for close to like 1.52 years, and we we are we are all of a sudden we're seeing like an, a, a, a huge surge in you know inquiries and you know. Uh, a completely new ideas of implementation with blockchain so we have on a regular basis we are getting inquiries uh, you know non stop for the past two months uh, in fact we actually just uh, you know onboarded a, a trade finance player they are actually a pretty big trade finance player in india so they right now we're building a system to completely you know digitize the operation run it on a blockchain based back end for them uh, so you know my question was uh, are you guys uh, facing you know a similar sort of surge and uh, 
you know, have, what has been your response or what do you think of this response that is actually coming through right now? Uh, do you think it's primarily only because of this COVID impact on, you know, the impact uh, that technologies right now, they people understanding that, uh, you know, technologies like blockchain can create like really uh, important solutions or, you know, what is it? So we just want to get your opinion. Yeah, so Mr. Baspa, yeah. Uh, yeah, we are getting uh, the loss of queries lately. Uh, I won't say it's uh, because of this uh, pandemic effect, uh, but we are uh, getting more uh, queries before that because uh, slowly but surely the people are understanding uh, where the block blockchain stands, where the position of blockchain, how it could be. Specifically, if you, I mean, India has not reached that point yet, maybe because uh, you know, there's a, a bit of confusion that when we speak a uh, bit, I mean, uh, blockchain here in India, someone makes blockchain is equal to crypto, but it's not that. I mean, blockchain is much, much more beyond crypto realm. So if you go but other side, the, I mean, in Europe or North American uh, region, you'll see that lots of assets which are being sold in gray area, uh, like illiquid assets and other stuff, uh, those are uh, those uh, agents or uh, the platforms who, who were working on gray market. They are coming want to come into that uh, you know legalized area where they can use the blockchain. And blockchain is the perfect solution because you know the traditional system doesn't support those things. So that kind of uh, queries are coming in as well as other solutions like uh, you know utility, bringing the utilities to the blockchain those are also coming in so people slowly slowly understanding uh, how the blockchain can be utilized how can blockchain can you know accelerate the different business proposition and uh, that's why this uh, uh, this kind of awareness is going beyond uh, you know among clients and uh, yeah we are seeing uh, much more uh, queries than ever before Yeah, I missed this. Could I just step in here? Yeah. Yeah. Can I go? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so what I have, uh, the last uh, couple of months, there have been a lot more inquiries. One, because of the opening of, of crypto, you know, that, that the legal hassle going away has helped in people looking at it more. Uh, so you're looking at, uh, you know, blockchain projects with the tokenization as a concept that, that are going. So till such time, I think for the last 18 months, most of the inquiries were only enterprise specific uh, you know projects and specific areas but now i think people are also open to you know in, uh, experiment and innovate and, and a situation like this is only going to make it uh, you know actually uh, make it faster it's not just blockchain i see this happening across all these emerging technologies but from being in the blockchain space i can say that the buzz is increased for sure so a lot of talk about okay how can we come up with something interesting with uh, blockchain as a you know backend which can help in you know make probably identity management or whether it's ensuring safety transparency so some of those core elements are being discussed a lot more now for sure can i go yeah you can go okay perfect um so i am not very bullish on the enterprise blockchain side i think if you remove uh, cryptocurrencies from um, blockchain, you remove the incentive system and hence you remove decentralization, which is um, what I am personally very bullish about. Um, having said that, I totally understand the other panelists' perspective. Um, so Bitcoin as an innovation really brought two things. One is the, uh, the, the blockchain technology in itself, and it also brought in over that um, the element of uh, an incentive system to decentralize. I think a combination of both of that in the use case of disrupting retail banking um, is what is the gold standard of a use case of blockchain. Now, when I look at removing cryptocurrencies from this, I think um, you could make a case for the value being added, um, but um, I also have looked at solutions and I've come to the conclusion that if you could do it without a blockchain, you probably should uh, because it's, uh, it's, you're, you're trying to trade off efficiency and scalability for um, decentralizing trust and you can't really decentralize trust without an incentive system to maintain decentralization. All right. All right. 
Okay. Thank you, guys. Uh, so the next questions uh, might be a little technical. Uh, it might not even, uh, you know, uh, be related to anything yet. So Darshan just added to the point. So it might be actually more relevant to Mr. Satish because of his, uh, you know, background verification system that he's been building. So we ourselves face this problem when we go to a client and actually pitch them a proposal, actually create the architecture for the products. So the it comes down to who bears the cost for node maintenance, right? So now if, say for a logistics, uh, uh, a logistics chain, and uh, now uh, say a, a big basket, you know, or you know, an Amazon now has to build a blockchain-based system, right? Now it becomes their job to actually convince the suppliers and their vendors to actually get on board into the system. And then how, uh, and then who bears the charges over there? So if they have to, you know, tell that the vendors or the suppliers actually have to bear the charges of maintenance, you know, the node maintenance charges, that's actually a little demotivating, like over here. So, you know, we wanted to find out what inputs do you guys have to uh, work around, around this solution, or around this challenge specifically for enterprise solutions. Uh, so, so one uh, thing that we are doing uh, in terms of uh, enterprise blockchain, uh, so for example, which when we are working with something like Hyperledger Fabric for a particular solution, we are trying to look at how uh, easy the the deployment and and uh, uh, how less the confusion can be in terms of who's going to pay, how much, uh, and, and this and that. So, as much as possible, we're looking at who is the one who's going to benefit the most. So, from a background verification perspective, it's the an organization, say a big IT company, which uh, which has been struggling with. Uh, you know, very uh, whatever technology is available, the fact that uh, it's it's probably just about sixty to seventy percent uh, accurate, right? And and uh, the downside of uh, a poor verification is huge for them in terms of the impact on the business. So they are actually more than willing to experiment in terms of spends also, in saying that you know we don't mind uh, you know actually looking at even if the cost is a little bit more if there is a solution. In fact, I did have uh, a big. Uh, Corporate, I wouldn't name the corporate as yet because they're on an NDA, but a large corporate who reached out to us and saying we'd really, we're willing to look at the entire cost and we're like we're willing to try this out, right? So uh, I would think that a lot of these models are still emerging. So we so the clarity on you know how the entire ecosystem is going to work. Only once we have something which is running live and have more and more participants uh, on the system, will we be able to clearly identify that. So even that's the reason why even on our uh, agri thing, what we plan to do in the initial stages is to try and see that we get more traction going before we get into a very fully uh, full blown commercial model and how all the other aspects are going to work. So start simple and then expand, build all the other things into it uh, after a point in time. That's how we are looking at it at this stage. All right, all right. Yeah, if you guys have anything to add to that, you know, feel free. Yeah, um, all right. I, so we... I totally agree with uh, uh, Satish's stance on um, deliver value and then work backwards from there. And if, let's say, there are enterprises that are benefiting from it, why won't they be uh, willing to pay, right? But the big question is um, focusing on delivering value first. And if that's the case, you're always going to find um, the right solution being implemented because again there is no one right or wrong solution or there's no one right or wrong way to do something especially with tech you always have multiple options and uh, different ways you can implement the same solution if it comes down to choosing a blockchain solution versus not the trade-off um, of increased compute cost should make sense um, in 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 increasing proportionally um trust and probably legitimacy of the database. And if that's the case where the downside is huge, where let's say uh, falsifying of uh, data is, is a huge concern, um, those enterprises would be willing to pay. But again, getting this post uh, to the proof of concept stage is not the biggest challenge. Getting it post that will be because um, at, once you have more users, uh, compute exponentially increases. So that's going to be the biggest challenge for that. All right, all right. That's great. That's great. So the, the you know the next question is actually uh, uh, to to Darshan itself. So we we've seen actually in India right now that uh, okay, just like you know all the other industries like the banking industry as well has been impacted. You know people. Uh, so but RBI has given like relief. You know to a lot of lenders to in fact actually deliver uh, more credit into the to sort of induce more credit into the economy. Actually give it to the lowest level of people. But still most of the lenders, the NBFCs, uh, you know the microfinance uh, companies, they're still holding back, right? So that's that. This is the problem that we have. Whatever measures that are actually being implemented from the top it's not actually trickling down you know to the customers all the way down so how do you see you know a, a blockchain based uh, banking system actually delivering these crucial services especially at you know times like this which is when it's actually needed the most 
I think this is a great question. And there are two fundamental problems here. One is a technology problem, and the next is a governance problem. Um, I'd like to start off by saying that RBI shouldn't be in the business of failed enterprises. If an enterprise is, is failing because of a weak business model, um, they shouldn't be bailing them out because at the end, they're bailing out the shareholders and uh, not anybody else. The problem today with banking is that they're always deemed too big to fail. All the risk adjusted upside that they take when they do these loans is not really risk adjusted at all because it's risk free, right? What risk adjusted means is if let's say banks go bad, they're supposed to enter um, some sort of a bankruptcy proceeding, but that's not happening. If that were the case, yes, banks should have entered that um, just last month, but that, that's not what happened. Um, so flip the question, what do you do as a regulator? Well, Yes Bank is an example. You have, you have uh, users who've, who've contributed towards the capital that they've ended up de deploying. Save the citizens, not the institution, because at the end, uh, your job as a regulator is to protect their capital. So I think this can be insurance companies to ensure a significant majority of the depositors are covered. Um, that's what the US has done with their FDIC insurance. It's quite, uh, uh, its coverage is quite extensive and it's structured such that 99% of the people's accounts will be covered. And the only people who are bearing the brunt of, let's say a bank collapse is the absolute uh, top. So the people who uh, need the capital the most, their funds are always protected. And um, with regards to capital, the capital infusion going on, uh, trickle down economics just doesn't work. We saw this in 2008, 90% uh, of all stimulus in the TARP program of 2008 went to executive bonuses and share buybacks. We're gonna see that happen here as well. Um, that's because it's not in their business model to uh, deploy that capital at all, especially with heightened risk, right? They, what they need to do is there as executives of the company need to do to show that I'm, I'm raising my compensation as an executive of the company. So you boost the stock performance by buying back the, buy back the shares and you line your own pockets because of your share performance. That's what's always ended up happening. And I don't, I have no doubt that it's going to happen again. So just because banks have liquidity doesn't mean they will actually end up lending. Um, and I think uh, another way to do liquidity deployment is uh, what the U S is doing right now. Uh, they, well, Andrew Yang called it the freedom dividend, but it's $1,200 for every citizen, irrespective of demographic, uh, income level and the like. And the best way to do such a, a decentralized and distributed uh, payout would be on a blockchain. I think that's where blockchain comes in extremely well, which comes to my second point, which is not governance, but technology. Um, legacy require physical visits for multiple rounds of documentations to facilitate a loan. I urge you to try to open a bank account today. You need to print out your documents. All, your print, all, the, all the stores where you can get a printout is shut. Unless you own a printer, firstly, you can't do that. I think uh, we're a place where we need to digitize first and the process today has way too many points of friction, uh, which comes back to us being consumer centric uh, in the way we are trying to solve for the problems. So banking with crypto is distributed, decentralized, and is built for the user-centric world. You can KYC with a digital crypto bank in 30 seconds and you're onboarded, no questions asked. It's not perfect. Let me just come out and say that. Most companies aren't fully regulated yet, but that is only a, fa a, a function of time. Uh, over the next two years, once there is regulations to um, regulate, let's say a crypto exchange or even a crypto lending company and hopefully a crypto banking company, why won't the best companies find so the direction we're going to go? Um, another limitation is all credit on the blockchain is collateralized based. So it's collateral based. So um, I think I'm very optimistic on it growing beyond there, but we're still at very nascent stages for um, saying a distributed system of compute is the only way to do it. But if you were to do a, a capital deployment for relief of most people, you don't pass it through enterprises. You do it direct to user and that's the best way to boost adoption for your um, your stable coin, uh, uh, digitized rupee, right? If that's what the RBI is going to mandate eventually, China's already mandated it. Dubai has a plan to do so. If let's say India were to do that, the best way to get adoption is to do that deployment saying, hey, there's this beautiful app. You can sign up on this app. 
The SAP is connected to the central blockchain. Get your capital from them. That's the best way to do it. All right, that's, that's pretty detailed anyway. Thank you. Uh, if we, we, I think this, this, the, we should have actually been, you know, uh, doing blockchain-based banking systems much longer. We've been seeing banking crisis like no man's business like for the last couple of years. You know, it's probably high time to make a switch now. Yeah. So my next question is going to Mr. Basker. Uh, yeah, so, you know, just uh, from your experience of building exchanges, uh, you know, and dealing with tokens, like, so it's this questions uh, in relation to the Supreme Court's just judgment that we actually had, the landmark judgment that just went past recently. So are you seeing uh, COVID uh, impacting, you know, a sudden surge in people using tokens? Uh, or do you, do you believe the move of people to, uh, you know, a crypto-based uh, system or people dealing with cryptocurrencies are, are more focused on their utility of the tokens as such more than just, you know, being used as an investment tool? Well, uh, this is a very good question. First thing, uh, uh, let me come to the uh, point where is uh, listing out the ban by uh, Supreme Court on cryptocurrencies. First, uh, as uh, Darshan said, uh, cryptocurrency is the best, you know, use case if you go by the financial world. Because the banking system, which is right now, uh, as uh, it is running on the world today, is not uh, working on behalf of, uh, you know, or working on in favor of um, the common users. So be, you, you take uh, one example of cross-border transfer. So if you make a cross-border transfer, it takes a lot of money and a lot of time. Although it's all electronic, why a uh, fund from USA to India takes five days of time? And there's no, there's no point. And on top of that, uh, the money involved it. And uh, throughout this network, the lots of uh, banks are getting benefited. And if you just uh, democratize the entire system, then crypto comes into the place. And uh, this is the right decision by uh, Supreme Court because, you know, we, we uh, as India, uh, we are basically export driven country. We, we do more export for, uh, so if you take IT or any other high end niche segments, we do exports. So for exports, it's, it becomes you know, very much important how we uh, take payments, how we uh, handle our uh, payment stuff and all. So for this, uh, crypto is the, I think, best use case. Even uh, I have seen for myself, I mean, uh, and a uh, few of our clients, that uh, crypto works such good way that uh, no current banking system can give you so efficient uh, cross-border payment system. And uh, it's, it's not legal, illegal, you know, I mean, uh, everything will come through banking channel, everything is trackable, so uh, no one can point it out, it's, a, it's a illegal, it's a black money, it's a money laundering, nothing like that, it's, it's, it's kind of, uh, you can say the negative publicity. And if we take the focus a little bit away from uh, crypto, then you can see as technology, blockchain uh, goes more deep more deep and is more widespread because blockchain is such a nice technology. If you take just one part of it, that the immu immutability of the data, the integrity of the data. I mean, when the multi, multi party involved, then who, who doesn't work and that the data should be, uh, you know, intact, immutable. So in that point itself, the blockchain is absolutely winning technology and uh, lots of, uh, you know, utilities can be convert. I mean, taken into the blockchain, like uh, Shatish is doing the HR. I mean, uh, you, you t if you take uh, India, I mean, it's a very well known. You know, uh, that uh, lots of counterfeit uh, certificates. Uh, even uh, during education system, the the uh, uh, you know uh, counterfeit of answer sheet, everything. I mean, there's been lots of news in newspaper or television channel that after serving 10 years in government department, the government has found that there's a use of counterfeit certificate. I mean, this, this system, the entire system, which is running on right now is very, very inefficient. And if you want to make it efficient, you have to use blockchain because there's no such other solution in parallel to blockchain that gives you the advantages which blockchain gives you right now. So if you take it beyond, even if you take uh, the agriculture system, which Shatish is giving, even if you combine that blockchain with the AI ML and the in agricultural uh, platform, actually, uh, which I told Shatish uh, a few times back that uh, we proposed to the government. So 
what that system can give you the agricultural system that no other system can give you it can take the benefit right from the farmer to right to the end user i mean the who are the buyer you know the from the uh, farmer which uh, is the pro produce and sell at what price to the immediate seller and that product when hit the market in how many fold that market i mean the price of that product goes up and where that product goes in the middleman in maybe three tiers maybe four tiers and those tiers have nothing to do with it i mean they don't even involved in the logistics even i mean they're just buying and selling stuff so if you take all this part you have to include blockchain because there's no other existing solution available to replace blockchain and this is the right time i mean uh, to for us to understand that blockchain has such an application in our socio economic world that no other no other technology can give you know come into the parallel to the blockchain so yeah uh, uh, you know uh, uh, considering the scenario right right now uh, which um, uh, has been you know given us uh, some hope and some uh, you know positive way to go in uh, go forward by lifting the uh, blanket ban which has been rbi has been uh, applied um, and the ban uh, ban has been lifted out by supreme court crypto is crypto is uh, is going to you know emerge more and more and it is going to bring more volume to it because uh, it will help businesses not only the traders it's not just investment it's not just trading it will also help the businessmen i mean who is doing import export so it will help businesses as well as in socio economic zone the other implementation of blockchain also will help a lot thank you all right thank you mr baskar so we are actually running out of time so i'll just quickly uh, get to mr satish's question right and then we'll jump to the uh, uh, questions from the attendees if they don't have any uh, so yeah mr satish so we see now covid 19 is is you know forced companies to change their operations right so the guys who were earlier sending 2000 3000 people on a floor like you have the rmgs or the, you know the sorry the evi the kpmgs and all running over you are now forced to have a less than 30% or 20% of the workforce inside the office and now they've actually even figured out that you don't really need to be in one place to actually get done right you can actually get done or work remotely so uh, this now we now the general consensus is that this this whole process is going to continue now in the future because people are getting a taste of it it's becoming easier to actually coordinate things between people so i'm coming down uh, to, you know to the point where which is actually focused on your part so hiring is going to be a very important role during that time like recruitment so what uh, value do you see or what impact do you see actually a blockchain based verification system can now actually give uh you know a, a background verification or you know a help or boost the recruitment process or make it better than what it was from before yeah so if you look at uh, in my opinion the biggest impact of this pandemic is actually been on the workforce or the way the workforce is going to function going forward so you know what was something that was unimaginable say about three months back it's become a, a, more or less a norm today each case has already announced that 75% of its workforce is going to be permanently working from home right so there needs to there need to be systems and uh, processes in place which will ensure that first of all you hire the right kind of people so interviews face to face and a lot of those processes that you were doing earlier are not going to happen so a lot of remote uh, you know hiring assessment a lot of those technologies are going to actually increase and uh, having uh, so to ensure that for example very small so uh, as baskar also spoke about it the value of a background verification is not just in in one element but there are multiple elements in it right from you know your personal identity to your educational certificates to your previous employments to your uh, you know in, uh, pan number verification to a lot of those things go in right and uh, typically in, in today's context what happens is these things uh, are done multiple times and and very less effectively imagine a scenario where on the blockchain and our our idea is also to be able to get all these verifications done from the source for example uh, we are doing a back end integration with aadhar to verify the personal identity once the information is identified that information is put on it so it's verified by the source then it's on the blockchain so it's one time verification which can then be used multiple times right we also trying to incentivize the so why would for example if a college uh, university were to verify the certificates they offer why would they want to do it because for most of them uh, students going back with uh, for, for uh, verification is a source of income or revenue now how do we uh, so there are a lot of these small, small challenges which you have to overcome but there are incentive models that you can look at what i see happening is it's not just uh, in the hiring uh, uh, 
uh, verification space, but also on the day-to-day -day work that happens. So, for example, you will probably have a geo tagging. You'll probably have things like uh, uh, attendance systems where information is going to be put on the blockchain. Customer or billing is going to be done based on that. Then you're going to have uh, so we've done experiments on RNR system, reward and recognition systems on the blockchain with the tokenization. So a lot of these things, which were uh, probably things that people. So there's again a difference between need to have and good to have, right? What was good to have say three months back has now become need to have. So now it's become important. So blockchain can actually enable some of the important elements for these to work, which is why I think that some of these uh, systems are going to actually work. And I think a lot of the impact is also going to be on the HR uh, side of things. Okay, okay, that's great. That's great. So we just quickly jump to you know, uh, yeah, to see what the audience uh, have in mind if they have any questions. Uh, yeah, so uh, attendees feel free to you know drop your messages on the chat. Uh, drop your questions on the chat. So yeah, it, uh, it'll come in the Q and A. Yeah. Uh, So there are a couple of questions that people had asked and Darshan had, you know, replied to them. So I'll just ask if Bhaskar or Satish has anything else to answer. Uh, is there any relationship between AI and blockchain? If yes, what? So it's basically, again, uh, use case based. Any I see a blockchain uh, in itself, in a lot of use cases, it's not just blockchain. In a, for example, in the agri use case that we are working on, like Bhaskar said, AI, ML, IoT, a lot of those things are involved. Right? What blockchain can offer is, uh, uh, you know, safety, uh, transparency, and those kind of things. But for the data itself to be, for example, from sensors, if data has to come directly to the blockchain without any human intervention, then you need to have IoT. A lot of those things, whether it's AI, whether it's ML, whether it's IoT, I think a, a convergence of these technologies is what we're going to see. All right, great. So there's one question that's come up. So, uh, which platforms like Ethereum, Hyperledger, Cosmos, etc., is the industry looking forward to, and which is the best to use right now? Yeah. Yeah. So anyone can answer. You know, whoever feels up to it. So I think everybody will have a different answer. So. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Don't you all three take it up one by one. Yep. So I guess again, it it depends completely on the on 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 multiple factors. You, the use case you're working on your team's comfort with a particular technology, the features uh, that it offers, uh, support that you get, the um, maturity of the technology itself. So I wouldn't be able to name one particular technology. We've done multiple protocol platforms. Depending on the use case, you need to actually identify. So that itself is a challenge. So you need to know, first of all, whether the use case requires blockchain or not. So can't force fit blockchain into a solution. Second, what type of blockchain? What are the features uh, that are going to help and what uh, typical system which works for this particular use case. So if it's a FinTech use case, with large volume transactions, which one to use? If it's a use case where safety, security, trans transparency is more important, which one to use? Who are the users? How are they connected? A lot of those factors go on. Yeah, so I am bullish. Ethereum is your place to start. If you are a bullish on building a private sort of a network, then um, Hyperledger is your way to go. And if you want to build a cross-chain solution, um, Cosmos is still early. It's, it may not be the most uh, stable yet, but it's the most promising um, cross-chain product at this point. But a good place to start would be Ethereum. Uh, there is another question. Uh, sorry, Bhaskar, do you have anything else to add to this? Uh, no, I think uh, uh, Satish and Darshan already said that it's based on use cases. So uh, whether you choose permissionless blockchain or permission blockchain is totally depends on the use cases. So there is no uh, thumb rule for that. Okay. Okay. So any idea on how blockchain can be integrated with business process management? Uh, me? Anybody can answer that question. Whoever wants to take it up, Vaskar, you might want to take that up. I think it's a pretty general question, right? Yeah. So it's yeah. A, yeah. Anyone wants to take it up? Uh, I didn't get it. Is it regarding the business process transformation or uh, management? Uh, Integrating blockchain in business process management. So I'm assuming when they say business process, they're talking about uh, integrating blockchain into a particular workflow. So yeah, I think so. That's what they mean. 
that's and that could it. mean that as well uh, it okay. could mean automating you know uh, probably some uh, part of their operations uh, you know so that's why i said the questions pretty vague uh, right so i think most of the points we've already discussed how you know we could uh, automate and how it impacts use cases and also i think we can skip that question it's fine uh, so there's another question that's come and this is directed at darshan uh, so somebody's asking us why should i be uh, in the cryptocurrency and blockchain business and how has the government eased the rules enabling me as a consumer and a business owner and good reason to be you have to have some sort of exposure in the crypto world one is if you're if you believe your national currency is going to continue to inflate drastically so protecting your wealth would be one good reason um just as a use case or or an example right in india inr has lost 13% of its value in the last 7 months versus the dollar and this is a currency where they're not stopping to print um uh, at all i'm talking about the dollar here they printed 8 trillion dollars in the last what five weeks and we're weakening versus them so what that essentially means is if, if you were a law abiding citizen um you paid your income tax you pay your, your your all the taxes in the world um post which you're saving an inr you need to beat 13% in the last eight months for you to have been at zero zero bad monetary and fiscal policy would be a good reason to buy a currency which has which has limited supply a, a, another good reason would be if you're looking to transact across borders in a compliant in a compliant and instantaneous manner you could use something like a stable coin where you're not taking price risk here so you could buy um, a dollar denominated currency and move because the way wallets work is irrespective of whether we are sitting halfway across the world or right next to each other it takes about a minute to transact on the ethereum network and there are certain blockchains that takes maybe 5 seconds or 6 seconds so um or if that is a use case that uh, you you if if let's say your business is in in um uh, transacting cross borders that could be another uh, strong use case another one would be if you just believe in self custody of your assets so for the first time you can it be the own the asset that you own what that means is just because you own let's say you bought a piece of real estate but anybody can come in and take that from you when i say anybody i mean a private enterprise could come in um a, a government could come and say hey this is a strategic interest and i need it so they're going to give you uh, a price that you don't have an option but to accept that's not the, and and okay another example would be gold up to um, early parts of the 20th century you could hold as much gold as you'd like but right now um you can't move across borders with large sums of gold they seize it because they inevitably uh, assume that it was sourced the wrong way and despite you proving that it's you know it's sourced or bought with fully legal capital you're not going to get it back you're going to probably go through a process of uh, what years together to get it back additionally um now if you are an indian and you want exposure in alternate as asset classes outside I'm bullish on Zoom. I want to buy this stock. How do I do that? I can't do that. I can't. I can't do that in the traditional banking world without making 50 calls to the bank, assuming that they're competent during COVID and the like, right? But there are applications out there. You can buy fractional, small components of these stocks with crypto. So um, I can, like, I can go on, uh, but I'm gonna uh, let. i'm going to stop here but the the any anything to do with free ownership of money movement of money um uh, and decentralization owning truly being the owner of your asset should be uh would be gold for crypto or blockchain all right we have uh, we have we're actually running out of time we'll have to you know wrap up in like a couple of minutes uh, so there's maybe time for one more question so somebody has actually asked us repeatedly so how do we decide you know blockchain can be used for a use case that that person might have so anybody can feel free to take a question okay so there are multiple uh, you know there are uh, standard uh, uh, you know you have matrix so you need to actually look at five or six factors as to you need to first look at the use case and see what what are the challenges that you currently facing so if you're already on a legacy system you're doing you're using a particular technology and you want to put it on the blockchain you have to see what's the value blockchain is going to bring so you have to look at the different features uh, the blockchain offers so whether it's immutability or whether it's identity or whether it's uh, 
or transparency or those four or five things you have to typical thumb rule would be if, if four out of the five or six uh, aspects uh, that make up blockchain are actually used or required in this use case you'll probably look at it i think in my experience uh, 80% of the or 75 to 80% of the discussions we have there's probably not a real need for blockchain it's more that people want to say that we also have done something on blockchain or they're trying to force fit it so you need to be very clear and the first step is to be able to sit and and honestly evaluate and understand okay is this if this is the workflow and this is exactly what is expected as the outcome what are the elements that blockchain can bring in if yes cost technology uh, deployment uh, speed a lot of those aspects everything has to be looked at and 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 net net if the return on investment is going to be good and you're willing to remain in the game for the longer term then it's something that you should look at so but there are so there are these uh, you can actually google and you'll find uh, simple methodologies where you have five or six factors and you look at these factors against the use case and you can decide i have a very simple way of looking at this if you can do it well without blockchain you probably don't need blockchain um i think satish is being very generous by saying 80% of the use cases don't need blockchain that come up i think it's more to the line of 95% um that's because most systems work reasonably well today and the leap between leveraging a technology and such as to be so drastic that um uh, if the absence of blockchain is such that you cannot do it that's the only that's the first implementation of what uh is, is is that's the sweet spot that you're going for and if it's a if it's an opt in hey you know what we can do this but it wouldn't it be cooler if we can do this on the blockchain that probably means you don't need the blockchain true i agree yeah that's 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 probably the you know the first thing that we tell clients as well when we go there we we tell them like we try to understand you know most of them don't really know how where to use it but they've heard it everywhere they think it adds value to them people have, people have told them that you can use it everywhere but most of the time you know it doesn't make sense for all the solutions so as of right now we ourselves see you know very limited solutions that actually can use blockchain like full scale without any problems um so uh, that should be you know, so we're going to be concluding this session where uh, out of time uh, so you know i'd like to thank all the panelists to uh, actually uh, you know for being here and actually uh, giving us your insight uh, you know on all the topics we still have a lot of exciting topics to talk about but we're short on time so you know we're going to have to do this for another time uh, so uh, you know just before i uh, sa- sign off uh, uh, manav do you have anything to add yeah i just uh, two things uh, first of all thank you everyone thanks to all the panelists and all the participants uh, guys some of your questions were not answered so uh, we can always pull all the three uh, panelists and uh, the host sabrish here and we can have a discussion going on uh, on one of our forums so if you have anything do uh, reach out and we will i'll make sure that they uh, you are able to reach out to them and your ans- questions will get answered uh, if there are any or anyone else i will try to get your questions answered uh, thanks a lot um, and just adding to the last question that was saying that you know how do you decide uh, for deciding a blockchain should be used uh, rather than deciding the technology see what problem can be solved and then decide the technology technology is always secondary it's always the problem that needs to be solved so if you have the problem you have the solution then you decide the technology so it can be a blockchain it can be iot it can be no technology it can be done manually so always go for the problem and not for the technology you will always come out with the best solution uh thanks a lot uh, for being a part and i hope to see you guys uh, in our future events and in discussion forums being a part of it thank you yeah so thanks manav uh, thanks everybody again thanks, uh, there was a couple of questions that came uh, regarding you thanks, know guys. upskilling themselves in blockchain uh, so just to just to let you guys know birth venue as such we have our own programs that we do so you can buy the courses off the website uh, the website is called birthvenue.in you know i'll put it up on the chat over here for people to see so we do a couple of things we have a we have our own cryptocurrency rating tool we actually have a fake news uh, detection and tracking product that we're building uh, so there's a lot of exciting stuff actually happening inside our company so uh, do get in touch right i'll put up all the details uh, information you can uh, either way get all the information from our social media pages so uh, we are we are you know we are running on uh, linkedin twitter uh, facebook you know and then we have a couple of groups as well uh, so yeah that would be it thanks everybody for coming and uh, yeah uh, stay tuned for more programs like this right um, and yeah thank you thank you thanks, guys thank you thank, thank, you. thank you guys thanks thank you, thank you.